My music is really an expression. It's my opinion, it was our opinions about certain tunes. And that's what I always say about jazz. It's an interpretive art, and it's an art form whereby when I play a Gershwin tune, I'm not really playing a Gershwin tune the way I think he would play it. I'm playing it the way it affects me. And that's the way I feel about it. I just thought that I'd be uh, lucky enough to end up with maybe a radio show that I'd be on at some point in those days and having a group of my own locally. I never thought of going to the United States or far less Europe. The competitive spirit that existed in the jazz world was a great boost to me because with the, uh, with my entrance into the New York scene and the jazz scene as a whole, there was a certain amount of uh, musical prejudice uh, in that some of the guys felt, well, you know, he's from Canada. What does he know about this? And that's the part that made me persevere even more so than anything else. The funny, the funny thing about that, Sandy, is that many of the so-called colored accents that they were using, I think some of the announcers did that because they figured it was putting a mood on the show. We had a, an Afro-Canadian playing jazz piano, and so I has to talk like that, you understand? You know, and that was their idea, and, and uh, that isn't the way I talk, as you know. I totally ignored it. It wasn't until I, uh, I was really confronted with a, a situations where either I wasn't wanted in that particular location or somebody was trying to block me from uh, reaching another level that I rebelled. Being on the road with all the excitement and the people coming and going and the different famous people that were coming to hear me and the things that were being asked of me, would you go here, would you do this? And the itinerary itself that kept me on the road was detrimental to a marriage. I'm not a complacent person. I don't go out there saying, well, listen, I don't We've sold the house, so it doesn't matter. That's not my idea. I go out there hungry every night. And I go out there inspired because the guys that I play with are so inspiring. Some nights or some days or sometimes it's more per, uh, pervasive than others. And uh, at those times, I don't try harder. I just try to get around it. You know, I don't recall any uh, real down times where I sat and sulked about it. Because first of all, my wife, Kelly, and my daughter, Celine, helped me through it. My manager at the time, Norman Granz, used to call and encourage me and say, look, if you, know, if you don't play another note, remember one thing, you don't owe anyone anything. I couldn't envision the fact that I would never ever be able to play. As I say, it was my left side, it wasn't both sides of my body. And uh, I'm a reasonably devout person. And I prayed at different times that I would be able to play again. And I believed that the good Lord listened. But I'm not going to make any announcements. I'm just going to, I'm going to come in one night and wherever the concert is, whether it be in Yucatan or Tokyo or wherever, play the concert, take my bows, hopefully, and that'll, that'll be it. When I close the piano that night and walk away, that'll be it.